not growing at the pace required to generate the revenues needed to expand services and relief to the poor. COVID-19 has destroyed livelihoods and caused 2 million people to lose jobs. And things are not going easier over the short term. The war in the Ukraine is leading to global oil and gas shortages, as well as shortages in the supply chain of grain and other staples. As we have learned from past experiences, when the price of oil rises, so too does everything else. Now, more than ever, we cannot afford to fail our people. In his 2022 State of the Nation address, President Ramaphosa called on all South Africans to forge a social compact, a new consensus for growth and jobs. Small business development features at the center of the social compact, of which will be pronounced 100 days from the State of the Nation address. In other words, it will be pronounced in May. The social compact is underpinned by the economic reconstruction and recovery plan aimed at building back better, greener, more digital, and more inclusive. Linked to the ERRP, we are also implementing a number of structural reforms under Operation Volindlela, together with a number of industry-level master plans, mostly led by the Department of Trade, Industry, and Competition. Our role as the department is to ensure that SMMEs are at the center of the country's economic recovery and that each master plan is specific on opportunities for small enterprises. We are fundamentally changing the business environment in which small enterprises operate. Fellow hustlers, we have recently developed the National Integrated Small Enterprise Master Plan, which is aimed at better coordinating small enterprise support, as well as drastically scaling up financial and non-financial support through leveraging and focusing the efforts of other stakeholders, including the private sector. Our master plan is soon going to be presented to cabinet for approval, then go out for public consultations. We are working with critical stakeholders to develop game changer programs that can have an urgent and significant impact on small enterprises. We are also busy incorporating and merging CEDA, CIFA, and the Cooperatives Development Bank of South Africa into one small business development agency. This will better integrate and align financial and non-financial support to SMMEs. We are also working closely with the new red tape reduction office in the presidency to reduce the red tape and the cost of regulatory compliance, including for informal micro enterprises. Key to this is developing standardized regulations that reduces onerous licensing costs and bottlenecks especially at municipal level. We're currently reviewing the Business Act to change regulations that impact negatively on SMMEs. My brothers and sisters, cutting red tape must be matched with an urgent and drastic step on demand side and supply side support for small enterprises. On the demand side, we have to recognize that our markets are not competitive and are overly concentrated in the hands of large monopolies and cartels that yield excessive market power. Here, we are working with the Competition Commission to protect small enterprises from unfair exploitation by dominant buyers of their products and services. We also are establishing the office of the SMME Ombuds to provide easy alternative dispute resolutions for SMMEs. One of our key instruments to address market power is the localization framework, which we developed and was approved by cabinet. It aims at linking competitive SMMEs with market opportunities in private sector value chains. To this end, we have a number of off-takes agreements we have brokered with major wholesalers and, and retailers, as well as value chain localization opportunities we have facilitated. 
a core part of our strategy is to get more SMMEs into manufacturing and productive sectors of the economy. Most SMMEs are found in retail, in retail and services, construction and transport. And we have taken a deliberate decision to grow SMMEs in sectors like agro-processing, the energy sector, mining, the digital economy, pharmaceuticals, and manufacturing. This work has not been without its challenges. For a start, many of our corporates are locked into established suppliers, and we are averse to bringing in new entrants. Most retailers and other big companies have well-established relationships with their international manufacturers and suppliers. In some cases, the issue of cheaper imports is used as an excuse to continue the trend of importing products. Sometimes this is valid and we must attend to price competitiveness. There are also issues of quality, quantity and reliability of supply. This is where we come in as the department together with our portfolio organizations. The model that seems to work best is partnering with the corporates that need the supplies. This includes collaboration on supply side measures like incubation and business development support through CEDA, backstopped by finance and supplier credit guarantees through CIFA and our credit guarantee scheme. We want to roll this out across sectors. COVID-19 and recent disruptions in Europe have fundamentally changed the way global value chains are managed. Gone are the days in which production of critical supplies is concentrated in any one country. The trend now is to have suppliers located in close proximity to the large firms and to the markets they service. We are already seeing the benefits of this in the clothing and garment industry. Our other strategy is to facilitate greater market access for SMMEs through reshaping procurement practices and identifying designated goods and services for SMMEs. We have worked closely with the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition to designate certain products for local procurement, especially by the public sector. This will go a long way in ensuring that the greater portion of government spend goes to local enterprises and products. We will continue assisting small and medium enterprises to be ready and capable beneficiaries of this local procurement initiative. We must also ensure that underserved constituencies like women and youth benefit disproportionately from our efforts. There are also simple things that we are trying to enforce, like the 30-day payment rule of suppliers. This summit is crucial for taking stock of how we as a country are progressing in deepening out industrial base, localizing supply chains, and increasing the participation of small and medium enterprises in key sectors of the economy. I look forward to hearing about how we are doing. Ladies and gentlemen, the two important aspects of the summit I would like to draw your attention to. The first one is about promoting locally produced products. We are so proud to all the South African enterprises that have taken a conscious decision to procure locally. This summit is accompanied by an expo where local manufacturers exhibit their products to the South African public. Accordingly, these locally produced products must receive prominence in our profiling and advertising spend. The second one is to change consumption behavior through encouraging the South African public to buy local. We have to constantly show that our brands can compete on the quality and pricing stage with well-established international brands. I'm confident that with our support, this battle will be won over time. It is going to need an extra effort of marketing, branding, promotions, and buy local campaigns across the length and breadth of this country. This has become an important message that I'm taking in the roadshows I'm currently conducting across the nine provinces. As I conclude, let me thank the big companies 
and retailers that have worked so hard to develop small businesses as suppliers and place their products on their shelves. We also encourage them and others to provide additional support around marketing of these products. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, we are aware that some retailers did not allow enterprises to do in-store activation and merchandising. We are positive that we are winning the fight against COVID-19. And as restrictions get relaxed, these challenges will be overcome. Proudly SA and the buy local campaigns are hugely important initiatives, which we must all get behind and support. It is only through working together as the public and private sectors that will address the challenges of low growth, high unemployment, and high inequality. This is the essence of the social compact being driven by President Ramaphosa. Let us work together. Charity does indeed begin at home. I thank you, Director of the Programme.